The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. One Oregon school district is receiving backlash after mandating that all school employees report students to law enforcement or state officials if they find out the students are sexually active. Teachers who fail to report the sexual activity of their students could be at risk of being fined or losing their jobs. Because according to Oregon law, sex under the age of 18 is considered abuse, and because of that, teachers have to report their students or risk a misdemeanor charge if they don't. I'm surprised, wow. this is I'm surprised wow. that this law even got passed. And even teens like wanting to talk about sexual activity. I think if they're coming to people and they're asking for help and advice, then embrace that opportunity to educate them because teens having sex before getting proper education is dangerous. And I think this instance is basically promoting abstinence only education and we know that does not work. So 46% of high school students are having sex in yeah. the United States. 62% yeah. of high school seniors have had sex in the United States. So someone who's going even consecutive consensual sex among two people under the age of 18 is considered abuse in the state of Oregon. So even going to your teacher and asking for education about pregnancy prevention, STD prevention, all these things we want to encourage in terms of healthier kids and healthier society, you're stifling that and you're making those teachers I mean, given the, subject the, the, to a the misdemeanor half, charge. Half the students are engaging it's, it's already in sex. More than half. You have to teach them safe sex. Absolutely. You have to them. Well, and exactly. also, let, yeah, me, exactly. let me ask you, have you all this. I would have no problem with this rule if you were required to report if you truly thought abuse was occurring. Correct. It's yeah. very different. For instance, let's say you have a 14-year-old in a relationship with a 19-year-old. Okay, I understand that. But if you have two 17-year-olds, maybe their parents even know. I'm Again, I'm not judging this. What I'm saying is if they want to go to a teacher and say, well, hey, miss or mister, and they're trying to figure out maybe a way to be safer, or they have, quite frankly, questions sometimes about, you know, what should I do in this scenario? You should be able to confide, and then the teacher would be able to use good judgment. Yes. If, you, if you can't use judgment as a teacher, What's the point of teaching? Teaching is yeah, using judgment. That's and what then, it is. And my concern also is if they don't have anybody to talk to and they're not getting the education, then I think about things like as a gynecologist, for example, chlamydia can silently lead to infertility. Anytime a teenager wants to talk to an adult, yeah. talk to them. Yes. They don't want to exactly. talk to us like overall. Usually they're, they're, they're not going to give you the talk talk to day. Talk well, and, and interestingly, what this made me think of is if this is truly considered abuse, then theoretically, when are they going to say, well, you go see your OBGYN and you're 17 and they ask, the OBGYN asks the 17-year-old, are you sexually active? If they say yes, is there going to come point where you then have to report, report it to law enforcement? Absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. And if teachers can talk to them, overall, young ladies should see an OBGYN between 13 and 15. Absolutely. So make sure, just bring them in. And it's not necessarily for a pelvic exam or anything like that. We just want to talk to them. Yeah. And if there's something you don't feel comfortable talking to them about, bring word of mouth is great. Ask who's great about talking with teens. Bring them to us, because Dr. Needham wants to talk to them. We're all in agreement. I mean, sex education is so important, and I've, it's threefold. It has to come from the school in some shape or form. It should be coming from the family. Definitely. Parenting in some shape or form, and it needs to be coming from your physician. So you need all three of those components. You're missing one. I think you're missing the boat. I think I've told this story before, but there was the book downstairs, kind of hidden in the bookshelf in the very far, very far corner, and I found it when I was about 14 called The Joy of Sex. <laughs> and I would sneak down there as I was learning about the human body, my own body. All, and I would sneak down there, and then I would hear my mom coming downstairs, and I would run to put it back because I was so embarrassed. <laughs> and then I'd go back she down. She probably like, left it out for you on purpose. She probably did. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. This was not meant to be found. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Good for your parents. <laughs> I, I, I learned so much from that book. That book. I like that you by intellectualized the, it. Well, like, yeah, by the time nice things came around, around, I'm like, oh. Oh, yes, chapter eight, I, I believe. Mean, I, I, who is the author of this book? Because your eyes are still lighting yeah. up all these years later. I think you wore that book out. I, <laughs> I became a voracious reader after that.